Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Monty's Garage. Today's a good one, as you've probably already guessed from the title. I want to put a tow hook on the front of the goat. Uh, the reason is, if you missed it, last couple episodes we were diagnosing a leak that we had on... I went up to the quarantine cruise, had a major coolant leak. I made it home without overheating, but I swear my heart sank when I looked in the radiator and there's like barely any fluid in it. If I'd have gone like another 10 miles, the car would have overheated and I would have had to have gotten towed. Therein lies the problem. And that's why I really started freaking out because how do you get this on a tow truck? See how low it is? You can't get a strap on under here and there's nothing to hold on to without tearing something off. I have no jack slots in my bumper, I shaved them. If you have a nice bumper, you don't want anyone pulling on the bumper. So there in lies the rub. I want to put one of those killer modern tow hooks on. You know, the ones you've seen on like nice Corvettes and Camaros and Mustangs and modern ones. I want to do that. And you never know. Maybe it'll become a product I can sell to you guys that have 69 GTOs or Le Mans. Or maybe any A-body. I don't know yet. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm sure we're going to be doing some cutting, drilling, welding, painting, bolting, whatever. We're going to do it all. And... Uh, the, oh, the other cool thing is I got a new tool, and it will blow your mind that I did this whole project without this tool, and I'm excited to use it. So let's get going. I'm going to get to the workbench, put some ideas on paper, get this on a lift, and take some measurements, and let's get it on. So I wanted to make sure our process is it's easy to install. That would mean it's bolt-in, no special tools are needed, um, no modifying especially. I don't want... I don't want people to be tearing into their car just to put a tow hook in um, if you can get away with not doing it. And can't read my writing, but it says manufacturable. So something that's relatively easy to manufacture in quantity. And I went to McMaster Car, which guys, you guys know I know that I love that company. Um, and I bought this uh, rod. So this is a 5 8 11. We're going to use it for mocking up and just you know figuring out a location on the front of the car. Uh, and then I also sourced a zinc nut. I have a couple different versions. Um, so this will be welded onto a, a plate of some sort. I haven't figured it out yet. Don't even know if I'm using this one yet. But anyway, so that's that's the point. So we need to find out where to put this. So let's go to the front of the car and see what we got going on. All right, guys, I think I found a good spot. Um, so here's our tow hook and receiver so the tow hook would be threaded so we can actually keep the tow hook in the glove compartment but we're gonna fix mount the nut so I'm thinking right here so this is pointed straight in front of the car and if you can see back in there there's the top of the frame the front part of the frame there's the top piece so I'm thinking we actually uh, come up with a plate that we bolt to the top because there's a couple existing holes and it comes out to about here where we weld on this nut. And we're going to concentrate on this prototype to be 69. But I know 70, uh, 68, they have different size gaps here. So, you know, maybe we'll get lucky and it will fit on multiple years. And uh, that would be kind of cool. So I'm going to see if my calipers fit in there. All right, team. So I took a bunch of measurements with my calipers. I wrote them down. So this is the top part of the frame, and we have a couple holes. There's a slot and a one-inch diameter hole. And what I did was I took a piece of scrap metal, I clamped it on to the top of the frame, and then I took a scribe, and from underneath, like this, I scribed the holes. So those are the holes in the frame right there. And the other cool thing we just figured out is... The left side frame that comes out is the same dimension. So you can actually just flip this over and it will work on the other side. So you can mount the tow hook on the right or the left with the same configuration. So that's cool. Um, so moving forward, I tried to make a 3D view here. And so this is a, a plate that we would mount through those two holes. And it would come out, and then we would weld this nut on the 
on the side of it. And this dimension from here to the outside is four inches. I picked that number because McMaster car had some steel stock that's four inches wide. So we can use that as our material. That's three eighths inch thickness. Um, so now that we have that, I wanted to go through, okay, so how do we mount it? Uh, this picture here is like a little boss on the bottom. Say it's on the bottom of our plate and it would hook into that that hole because if we have a tow hook on here there's going to be a tremendous amount of force pulling the car and that force we want it to engage the frame as easy as possible so that was my first design you know weld this boss on here and then bolt bolt it down I started thinking about it more and this is really hard to get a wrench on this nut because it's recessed back in the frame. So plan B is actually taking another 3 8 piece of um, steel stock, tapping it so you would actually take that piece and put it in there and that would act as your nut. It wouldn't be able to rotate because it would be about the same width as the inside of the frame. So when you're bolting it down, it'll automatically self-lock. I think that's a good idea. I already made some rough designs on this cardboard to mimic our frame holes. The frame holes are on the bottom. We'll put this piece of cardboard, I'll tape it onto the frame and see how it looks. All right guys, check it out. So the bolts fit perfectly in the holes uh, through the cardboard. And then this is where we would weld our nut on, just like that. Alright guys, now you see why I picked a 4 inch piece. A lot less cutting. Because this is thick. And I don't know if my DeWalt is going to be able to handle it. Alright, there we go, we made it. I'm going to take my flap disc grinder and deburr it all. And we can start playing with it. So I made a little bit of a radius. Not too bad. I'd rather have a radius there than a sharp edge. Just for um, forces will accumulate here and cause fractures if you're not careful. So I'm just going to round this out and I'll be right back. Ta-da! <laughs> this is the tool I've never had before. Can you believe it? I built the GTO without this thing. Finally, I own a drill press. It's not a fancy one. It's just a WEN 12 inch. But I'm so excited because now I can drill holes. In our mounting plate so I took our little uh, template that we made from my, my little piece of sheet metal and I just placed it on top traced my holes all right hole number one Alright guys, so I made a little um, temporary backing plate. This is actually just a thinner, thinner piece of metal, the same one I used the original template for. Uh, and then I tapped it to weld the bolt to the plate. And then you can put the plate up in there. And then there you go. So this is anti-rotate. So it's within the frame. It won't rotate. Or if it hits the sides, it will jam then you can tighten it um so that's probably the method i'm going to go with all right guys here's the bigger version i tapped it too so it'll make it easier to um to mount so i'm just going to use this as my just for mocking up but for production this would be welded all right guys this actually worked really good up until the point i dropped it in the frame and those of you guys that know what the side view of the frame looks like here's the here's the front here's the nose of the frame this is where we're bolting into the frame goes down here and this is your steering box I dropped it and it went way down in here inside the frame 
it took me a half an hour to get both of my magnetic reaching tools to get this out because this is heavy right so one magnet wouldn't stay connected to it i had to use two oh my god i was swearing like crazy so that brings me to the back to our our point our easy to install we want this easy to install so here's plan c i guess plan c is this bad boy look at that so here's our plate in the car and now i can get a plate with bolts in it and just stick it in like that and sandwich the frame in between so that's actually a really good idea except that I can't re we can't reverse this like if you want to put this on the right side of the car this isn't gonna work so I'm, I'm still gonna think about it but we're getting somewhere I mean at least this is actually I kind of really like this idea because you're clamping this whole surface area inside the frame it's actually kind of neat maybe we actually just make a just a long brace so you could flip it any way you want so if you want to put on the other on the right side you can put on the right side left side fits either way so might have to do another prototype here here is revision four i think or maybe five i don't even know but Here's a new, made a new shorty bracket, let's call it. So this is reversible. Assuming we, we bolt, I mean, we weld nuts in here. I can reverse it either way if we flip this over or not. All right, guys, about to weld this. You got to clean it. I like to use um, acetone. Like so. This gets all the, the oil off and stuff. Especially if you touch it barehanded. And so now all I'm going to do is add a tack on this side and a tack on that side. And that's all we need for this part because we just don't want it to turn. All right, there we have it. You guys check it out. So cooled off, obviously. Bam. I love it when a plan comes together. So as you can tell, it's just a tack on each side of the of the nut, the bolt head. And uh, now we can go to the next step. You guys recall this is the plan. So I went ahead and ground down the edges, cleaned it up, and now I have to figure out how to clamp this together so I can tack it. Alright guys, here's the my crazy contraption. This is not recommended because this is plastic or rubber on the end so my goal here is frankly just to tack it so we're going to tack it probably in two spots um, and then i can take the clamp off and then weld it oh my gosh stuff i get myself into right all right guys there we go all tigged up not too bad, eh? For an amateur. I never said I was good, guys. Come on, give me a break. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the car. And let's hope that it works. <laughs> Alright, guys, there it is. I don't have my hook. I actually had to special order it. So as soon as it gets in, it looks like it'll work. Looks awesome. Uh, so next step is I need to paint it. It's time to get going. I'm going to paint this with Pour 15. This is my favorite rust preventative paint. Uh, it's going to look like gloss black. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to use my spray gun. So if, you, if you've missed it, check it out. That video shows everything you need to know about how to spray it. Okay, so check that out. I love it. But in production, if I go to production with these things, I'll powder coat them, right? So powder coat in bulk, super low cost, rock hard finish, awesome. Anyway, so we'll get to it. Hey guys, 415 right there, baby. Look at that. Oh yeah, it looks awesome. Sorry, my fingerprints are all over it. And while that was drying, I got a little shipment. Tool hook. Comes in this cool box. See, it says ZL1 add-ons. 
Let's open this bad boy up. Yeah, look at that. This is stainless steel. I think it's 303. I don't know for sure. I know it's stainless steel. And it comes off. So what we had to customize on here was the thread. I used their standard. Uh, the thread length. And the length from the shoulder of the thread to the mounting point. So you, we could literally leave this in the car and just take the hook off. But we'll see how it looks. So let's mount it up and go from there. What do you like better? The right or the left? I like the left. All right, guys. Hey, that was a fun project. You guys know that I love custom and customizing. That is so unique. I know no one else has one. Otherwise, I would have found it online. Now, if any of you are serious and want to do the same thing, let me know. Leave a comment below or send me an email. The email is in my profile. It's fastmontysgarage at gmail.com. If we get enough interest, I can start crunching the numbers to see if we can make them in bulk and get a lower cost. Because right now, if I just sold you one, it's about $2,000. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a lot more than that. Seriously, if we get like 10, 50, 100 people, that drives down the numbers because I can get them all cut, water jetted. Um, I'll probably do the welding initially or have someone weld it, I don't know yet, and powder coat them. So, because I ain't spraying uh, hundreds of those. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys, and you guys know the drill. Build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.